Now, in verse 13, we come to Zebulun, a prophecy about Zebulun. Zebulun shall dwell by the haven of the sea. He shall become a haven for ships, and his border shall adjoin Sidon. Now, <clears throat> Zebulun's territory was located in the Galilee region of Israel in the north. The name Zebulun means exalted or raised up, and the geographic region of Zebulun uh, has a lot of mountains, and Zebulun is literally raised up or exalted in the mountains. Uh, the territory of Zebulun sat between the Sea of Galilee and the Mediterranean Sea, so that's why it's a haven for ships, or it will be a haven for ships, according to this prophecy. Now understand, when, he, when Jacob gives this prophecy, the land of Israel hasn't even been divided up among the tribes yet. And so he's talking about Zebulun being a haven for ships there between the Galilee and the Mediterranean Sea. Plus, uh, there's a trade route called the Via Maris, the way of the sea. It passes right through the land of Zebulun. Uh, and so all of, all of the trade that is passing through the region, it goes through the land of Zebulun, making Zebulun very important and very strategic economically and very wealthy. Um, I want to share with you just a, just a few uh, characteristics about the tribe of, of Zebulun that I think are worth noting. Uh, in Judges, Zebulun demonstrated exceptional courage when some of the tribes of Israel were afraid to even go out and fight. Zebulun demonstrated courage. In Judges chapter 5, verse 18, it says of Zebulun, that Zebulun is a people who jeopardized their lives to the point of death. They were willing to lay down their lives in the battle. And, 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 and as, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we're also told to lay down our lives for Christ. Oh, maybe not physically for most of us or maybe even all of us, but we are called to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily. And not live for ourselves, but live for Jesus Christ. Deny ourselves, not count our lives dear to ourselves, as the Apostle Paul says. To live for Christ. And not for self. Now, I'm going to say a few more things about Zebulun in a couple minutes. I want to, I want to look at Issachar first. And then we'll go to a passage that talks about both Zebulun and Issachar. So now look at verse 14. And this prophecy from Jacob about his son Issachar. <clears throat> so again, picture the scene. Jacob is on his deathbed. He's dying. He knows he's dying. These are his final words to each of his sons. All the boys are gathered there around the bed. And dad says to Issachar, Issachar is a strong donkey. <laughs> Thanks, dad. What was, the, what was the last thing your dad said to you before he went to the great by and by. Well, he called me a strong donkey. That's what he said. He's a strong donkey lying down between two burdens. Now, if you call someone a donkey today, obviously it's, it's, a, it's a criticism. It's a put down. Uh, but in the ancient world, if someone called you a donkey, you'd say, wow, thank you very much. I can't believe you think so highly of me that you think I'm a donkey. Donkeys were very valuable in the ancient world and prized. Donkeys were, you know, the F-250 of the ancient world. You used a donkey to haul all your stuff. In the ancient world, it was good to have a friend who owned a donkey. So you could borrow it on the weekends to move stuff. Hey, can I borrow your donkey? i got to go pick up a couch at Ikea kind of thing. In the Bible, donkeys carried kings. Kings didn't ride on white horses. They rode donkeys. David rode a king. Solomon rode a donkey at his coronation as king. And Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, we have that wonderful prophecy about the Messiah coming into Jerusalem to present himself as the king and we're told in Zechariah 9.9, 9, he will come into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, which Jesus did on Palm Sunday. 
So for Jacob to say Issachar is a strong donkey, that's a compliment to his son. When he says here that he's lying down between two burdens, the word burdens is literally saddlebags, saddlebags. Issachar is a strong donkey lying down between two saddlebags. This is also a reference to the geography of Issachar. Again, he's writing this. He's saying this while they're living in Egypt. They're going to be in Egypt for hundreds of years before they ever go and inhabit the land and before the land is divided up by the, uh, between the tribes and Joshua. And he's able to look ahead into the future and he's able to describe Issachar as a donkey lying down between two saddlebags, you know, seeing the territory that they're going to live in. Issachar was assigned territory in the eastern Jezreel Valley, and Issachar was situated between two mountains. On the northern boundary was Mount Tabor. On the southern boundary was Mount Gilboa. Issachar was in the valley between the two mountains. So the two mountains sat like two saddlebags on each side of Issachar. And, he, and, and Jacob sees this in this prophecy where they're going to live. Now he says of Issachar, he saw that rest was good and that the land was pleasant. He bowed his shoulder to bear a burden and became a band of slaves. Now, verse 15 is not saying the tribe of Issachar was slothful or, or lazy who just liked to rest all the time and not work. No, in fact, the opposite is true <clears throat> about the tribe of Issachar. Because of their location in the eastern end of the Jezreel Valley, many invading armies, when they invaded the promised land, they entered into the promised land through Issachar. And so in, in many occasions, Issachar was the first line of defense against invading armies. And so Issachar had to fight very often for their own survival. Uh, eventually, they were conquered and became a band of slaves. That's referred to here at the end of verse 15. So, so when it says that Issachar saw that rest was good, that means rest from war, rest from fighting. They, they were glad when they had peace in their land and weren't dealing with an enemy army invading their, their territory. They weren't lazy or slothful at, at all. In fact, 1 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 5, describes the men of Issachar as as valiant men, valiant men, because they, they were like the front lines of defense for Israel. 